Welcome to Better Sex, where you get the information and inspiration to create and enjoy your best possible sex life. Join your host, sex therapist Jessa Zimmerman, as she brings you expert guests, helpful tips, knowledge, and strategies to improve your intimate relationships. And now, your host, Jessa Zimmerman. Welcome back. Another episode of the Better Sex Podcast. This is Jessa, and I am glad you're here and just delighted that you're spending a little bit of time, a little bit of your day with me, learning something about sex. Maybe something that'll be useful, that'll help you create a sex life that you guys can both be totally enthusiastic about, which is, I think, my larger goal. I actually, I know it sounds totally corny, but I actually believe I make the world a better place one sex life at a time. That's sort of my my purpose in all this. Today's episode, this is kind of fun because I'm talking to another sex therapist, Vanessa Marin, about a quiz that she's putting together. And you may or may not know this, but I have a quiz that I built years ago uh, called How Healthy Is Your Sex Life? And it was about kind of tracking the five biggest pitfalls, these themes I was seeing in my clients about where they kind of got off track and, and their sex life started to deteriorate or wither or whatever word you might want to use. Anyway... Her quiz, her, her concept, her model is about having a sexual personality type based on sort of what you're looking to get out of sex, what the real payoff is for you, what you're seeking, what makes it satisfying. And she, she actually came up with 11 different personality types. Once you hear them, will probably make total sense. None, none of them were something I hadn't thought of or, or heard of before, but it's just really interesting that she's identified these types, describes them shares the quiz that you can take to find out what type or types you are. And then, you know, it's especially useful if you could compare that with your partner. You know, I'm this type, you're that type. No wonder we get into some of the struggles we get to, or this sheds some light on how we could make our sex life really better for both of us. So I hope you get a lot out of the conversation and uh, go take the quiz. And before we start the show today, it is sponsored by Intimacy with Ease. It's a method to help otherwise happy couples achieve a sex life that is easy and fun for both of them. So you can actually just enjoy your sex life with zero stress. For more information, if you want to watch a brief little training video that's available, all of that, go to intimacywithease.com. So, Vanessa, thank you so much for being with me. Thanks. Oh, and my last name is pronounced Marin. Most people say Marin. <laughs> ah, okay. Marin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Having uh, lived in the Bay Area for quite a long time, I probably would have said Marin. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Only Bay Area people know it. <laughs> right. Oh, right. Yeah. So, um, why don't you start by just telling the listeners a little bit about who you are and what this whole concept is of, you know, of this personality type? Yeah. So my name is Vanessa Marin. I'm a licensed sex therapist and I help people stop feeling ashamed and embarrassed in the bedroom and start having way more fun with sex. Um, And so one of the fun things that I've done is created this sex personality types model. So really, you know, I know we all love personality types, all the, you know, quizzes, like which type of pizza are you? It's so (laughs) dumb, but we can't help but (laughs) but take it anyways. Um, So I thought this would be a more fun topic (laughs) to uh, create a personality type. And, but the basic idea behind this model is to get a sense of what it is that you are looking for out of sex um, so that you can understand yourself and you can better understand your partner as well. So what are the types that you have chosen that you've identified? Like, and, and what went into sort of taking what you see in people and what you know, you know, in your practice and, and coming up with types? So the model was inspired by my clients that I worked with in my practice. Um, I was starting to just really, you know, listening to conversations with people and hearing them talk about sex in really different ways and recognizing, yeah, we're talking about sex, but we're talking about something very different as well, different sets of needs that were coming up. So once I first 
kind of had that idea of it, I started paying more close attention and saying, okay, what are people describing? What is it that they're really looking for? We're not just talking about sex here. And so I just started taking notes. Um, So it's a model that I've had kicking around in the back of my head for a few years now. And once I felt like I had finally gathered enough information, seen enough of the different types, I really (laughs) started (laughs) plotting it out and, you know, coming up with names of them. So there are 11 different personality types. Oh my gosh. Okay. (laughs) We can go through, I can go through them all in one go, or we can kind of pick a few to go into more detail about. I can just read names of them. Um, I mean, I think it would probably be useful to hear at least a little about all of them, and then maybe we can drill down, or I mean, let's see what happens. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. Cool. (laughs) Okay, so the first type is the decompressor. So again, you know, the whole model is about what we're looking to get out of sex, what is going to really make us feel, you know, satisfied. Um, So with the decompressor, sex is really about stress relief. So it's about kind of blowing off steam, letting go of stress, really that feeling of like relaxation that you get after you have sex. So even a lot of people who are decompressors will talk more about that feeling after sex than they will about before sex because it's just that's really what they're looking for. Next type is the explorer. So for the explorer, sex is all about novelty. They're really curious about trying new things, experimenting in the bedroom. And it's not so much that all these experiments need to go perfectly. <laughs> it's just, it's more the act of experimenting that they really enjoy. Okay. Um, so that's, that's the most important thing to explore. To the fair trader, um, that's the next type that we have up, the fair trader. And um, for them, sex is all about generosity. They want to feel like there's this even balance between giving and receiving between them and their partner. So it's really that that sense of balance. It's not, a, you know, that it's more about one partner than the other. It's about the two of them being in balance. The next type is the giver. Um, And so the giver, this is a good one to contrast with the fair trader because the giver really views sex as a gift that they give to their partner. And for the giver, they enjoy the act of giving much more than they enjoy the act of receiving. So again, the fair trader is all about that balance. The giver will even tell you, you know, I like focusing on my partner more than I like having my partner focus on me. Yeah. Yeah. My pleasure comes from my partner's pleasure. Yes. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, Next type is the guardian. So for the guardian, it's really important for there to be a sense of safety and security around sex. Guardians are really into boundaries, really into having enthusiastic consent. Um, Sometimes this can be because of a negative experience with sex, um, like sexual abuse in the past. Um, Other times it's just about wanting to feel that really secure foundation with a partner, but that's the most important um, aspect of sex. The next type is the passion pursuer. So passion pursuers like sex for to like for sex to feel all encompassing, really intense, very passionate, um, maybe even animalistic. <laughs> so passion pursuers are very in, in tune with the energy between them and their partner during sex, and they just want sex to feel like you know time stands still, and it's just the two of them in that moment together. Next Makes up, sense. we have the the pleasure seeker. So the pleasure seeker, sex is all about feeling good. It's kind of, you know, just that simple pleasure of enjoying your body with another person's <laughs> body. Pleasure seekers sometimes don't even understand this whole concept of the personality type because it's like, sex is just about feeling good. Like, what else is there? <laughs> so that's, that's the pleasure seeker. And we have the last couple. We have the prioritizer. So for the prioritizer, it's very important that sex feels like a priority in the relationship. Um, so they want to feel, you know, desired by their partner, want to feel like they're not making excuses about, oh, we're too busy or I'm too tired. Um, they like having a consistent sex life that feels like it's something that we're, you know, making the space for it in our lives. As yeah, well. yeah. The romantic is all about connection. So they really want to experience emotional intimacy and connection with their partner. It's not even so much about the physical act. It's about that sense of connection, feeling really present with each other, not distracted or, you know, trying to get it over with quickly. It's really about enjoying that moment together. Yeah. Yeah. The spiritualist is a little bit similar to the romantic, but for the spiritualist, it kind of goes even to a next level where sex is about spirituality, about connecting to a higher energy, um, a higher purpose 
purpose. It kind of feels like a transcendent experience. Um, so that's the spiritualist. And then our final type is the <laughs> thrill seeker. So for the thrill seeker, the most exciting part about sex is sex that feels forbidden or taboo. So they may enjoy elements of kink, of power play, um, of domination and submission. So um, the thrill seeker is all about, you know, if, if, it, if there's that sort of twinge of, ooh, this is a little naughty or we shouldn't be doing this or most people wouldn't do this, that's going to really fire up the thrill seeker. Interesting. Of course, none of these sound, I, I guess I want to say revolutionary or new. I mean, all of this is stuff I've heard from my clients, right? Yeah. It, it, which to the point you did, but it's interesting yeah. <laughs> that you grouped them like this. Now, I, in listening to these, I'm thinking that this is a little bit like love language languages where we probably mm. have more than one. Yes. Right. Like there's clusters or things go together. We've got, yeah. a, you know, these combinations, I would imagine. Yeah. So most people are going to be a combination of a few types. And that's what I think is sort of the fun way to play with the model is um, getting a sense of, oh, yeah, these two are really close. If I had to pick one, which one would I pick over the other? But yeah, typically two to three types um, are going to be, you know, most people are going to resonate with that. I've had people look at it and be like, I'm a little bit of everyone at different yeah, times. Right. <laughs> the universalist. Yeah. 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 So that's totally great, too. Uh, it, it's really just meant to be a conversation opener and, and help you, you know, dive deeper into your own relationship with sex and then talk about it with your partner. I imagine you're talking about this with clients to some degree. Have you brought this model into therapy or is it something that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've definitely brought it in to work with clients to help them really understand um, sometimes, you know, the misunderstandings that they might be having around sex. So there was a great example of this couple that I worked with where it was a husband and a wife, this particular couple, and the man happened to have a higher sex drive than his wife. And so the wife would often agree to have sex, even if she wasn't really in the mood, she wasn't feeling it. It was kind of like throw my husband a bone type of thing. And to her, you know, she couldn't, so her husband didn't feel satisfied with that. And right. she could not understand that. She said, you know, he's getting what he wants. I'm having sex with him. I'm, you know, I'm doing this favor for him, even though I don't want to do it. How can he not be satisfied? And it really turned out that he was a giver. And what he was really wanting was to be able to focus on her, to give something to her um, rather than, you know, him just receiving or, you know, him just kind of, uh, yeah, having her do it for him. So being able to understand it in that way, that her participation was really important to him and valuable to him that helps them both realize ah okay this is what you know this is what we're really talking about not just this argument of how often are we having sex right right hey it's Jess I'm just taking a little break to invite you to my free monthly webinars that I do on a variety of topics that always include an open Q&A session with me at the end. I'm doing these monthly. If you want to hear about them, be invited so you can register. Make sure you join my mailing list. You can go to bettersexpodcast.com slash list. Do you have any sense of whether some of these are way more common and others are sort of more rare or does it seem to you, you know, in your conversations, does it seem they're sort of equally distributed? <laughs> yeah. I keep looking for patterns around this and I, I, it's funny. I'll, I'll think I have a pattern for a while. Of, okay. Yeah. There are, I'm coming across a lot of givers and then I'll talk to a ton of decompressors after that. <laughs> so, it seems to be that there's a, a pretty decent mix of things. I mean, I, yeah, I think I would say that, um, the decompressor, the explorer, the giver, the passion pursuer, um, those, if I had to pick, I think those <laughs> tend to be a little bit more common than most. But yeah, a lot of, they're really just very, very common. Yeah. So how do people, you know, think about this or get, you know, some sense besides listening to your descriptions, mm -hmm. right? Is there another way to figure out what categories you fall into or what, what sex means to you? Yes, like, you know. we are actually putting the fin the uh, finishing touches on a quiz ah, right now okay. on our website. So if um, your listeners want to come over to vmtherapy.com, we're going to put together a little quiz um, that you can you know actually go through and answer a few questions, and we'll share with you here. Here might be some of your top types, so that could be a really fun way to yeah yeah more. okay. So talk to me a little bit about what 
what you've seen as maybe some of the most, I guess I want to say problematic pairings, if you've got a couple, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I assume in general, we're different styles <laughs> than the yeah. people we're partnered <laughs> with, so, or personality types. So what, which ones seem maybe most difficult to bridge or, or take, you know, that much more understanding or communication? Yeah, I think all of them can work together. It's just some of them are going to require more communication beforehand and 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 kind of navigating it together. So one tricky pairing can be the guardian and the thrill seeker. So for, again, for the guardian, they're all about that sense of security and safety and, and wanting to have, you know, boundaries in place. And the thrill seeker um, you know, they really like that element of the taboo and the forbidden. And so that can, you know, sometimes be a little bit tricky. But what I have found is a lot of people who uh, explore kink tend to actually be very good about having boundaries and enthusiastic consent. Right. So sometimes that actually can be a great pairing if you have a thrill seeker who has that great foundation. That can actually end up being a really, really good pairing. Um, but if you don't have it and, you know, don't have that in place yet, that can be a little bit challenging. Yeah. The another tricky one. So the pleasure seeker can be a little bit of a tough match with the spiritualist um, because mm. the spiritualist is really wanting to have this transcendent experience. You know, like I'm leaving this world and going somewhere <laughs> with sex. And the pleasure seeker is, I want to have my orgasm and feel right, good. I'm in my earthly body here, just <laughs> looking to feel good. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so that can be a little bit of a tricky one. And again, just comes down to communication and, and finding creative ways to, to work with each set of needs. Yeah, yeah. And do you, do you find that most of these have, a, or maybe they all have sort of a, I don't know, a light side and a shadow side? Like there's mm-hmm. there's good things about each of these, and then they each come with their own sort of challenges? Absolutely. Yeah. So we're actually with the the quiz that we're developing right now, when we're going to spit out the results, we're going to share, you know, here are some of the great things about your personality type and, and the ways that it really contributes to you having an amazing sex life. And here are some of the challenges that might come up that, you know, we all have our challenges. There's no shame in that. But yeah, each type definitely has specific challenges that can come up for it. So for example, the explorer, Sometimes they can get so fixated on this idea of novelty, of always wanting to do something new, that they don't really spend a lot of time relaxing and settling into the experience and finding new ways of, you know, even something like missionary position might sound a little (laughs) boring, but you can find a million different ways to slightly different angles, playing with, you know, maybe doing some role play or some dirty talk or making eye contact or having different kinds of touch. In a different room, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So sometimes explorers can be a little too much, you know, onto the next thing, always wanting to find something a little bit different. Um, So that can be a challenge. People like the romantic and the spiritualist, sometimes, you know, they can want to have such an in-depth connecting experience during sex that they can, it can be tricky to have, I, I like to call just like kind of Tuesday night sex, you know, it's <laughs> like, we're tired, but we, we want to connect. Let's just get it done. Let's have a quickie, have a little bit of fun. Sometimes a, a romantic might really struggle to have a quickie or just have a little bit of fun because they're wanting to have such a deep you know, emotional connecting experience. Well, I mean, that does make me think that while we have these preferences or types or desires, we always have to remember with, we're, you know, we're having sex with another person. I mean, in this conversation we are, right? So it's like, we don't get to just have it our way. Yeah. You know, like we have to be able to, to sort of collaborate with a partner. And I don't know if it's always take turns, but figure out different ways to, to do things, you yeah. know, even if it's not our go-to. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So sometimes it can be just taking turns. And actually that can be a fun way to play with the personality types model is what about going through all the types? (laughs) Right. (laughs) right. Pull a slip of paper out of the jar and tonight we're we're fair traders. Yeah. (laughs) Tonight, we're going to have some fair trader sex. Let's see what that's like. Um, yeah, so I think experimenting, allowing ourselves to you know, try and try out new things and see what we resonate with. And you might surprise yourself. Maybe you think of yourself as a giver, but you, you know, get into trying the, you know, prioritize or something like that. And you really end up finding you resonate with that. So playing around with that. But um, you can also just straight up take turns between your types. Um, and it could be alternating nights or even in the same night, you know, 
know, hey, maybe the first 10 minutes, we're really going to focus on, you know, on the giver. So, you know, they'll really be able to give to their partner. But then the next 10 minutes, we're going to go pleasure seeker style. Um, So you can, yeah, definitely mix it up. Yeah. The other thing I was thinking as you were talking about specifically about the giver, you know, I've worked with a, a lot of people like that. And in some ways, some of the time, I don't want to say it all the time, right? They're sort of cut off from their ability to receive. Yes. You know, like the, the fact that they're a giver is not necessarily a wholesome, integrated yes. <laughs> sexual expression. You know what I mean? Like yes. they, they've never thought about themselves. Sex has never been about them, you know, whatever it is. And, and they've got this sort of underdeveloped capacity to receive. So Absolutely. it's yeah, not just that they have a personality type, but they almost have a, I don't know what I want to call it, something that could use some growth and attention. And, and maybe that's true with a lot of these. I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, that's definitely the shadow side of the giver um, is feeling uncomfortable with receiving. And that can be for a lot of different reasons. You know, your own body self-consciousness, your own sense of being worthy and deserving of attention, um, your shame or embarrassment around sex. There can be a lot of reasons. So yeah, the model is, you know, it's meant to be playful and lighthearted. But when we get into some of the shadow sides, it also invites opportunities for us to do deeper reflection and see, hey, what might be coming up for me in this area? Is there something that needs a little more attention or a little, you know, support? Um, yeah. But yeah, definitely for the giver is, is figuring out, is it, uh, you know, are there any blockages that you have around your own ability to receive? Right. And I guess that's where it could be really fun and even healing to, to play with the other mm-hmm. types and take on some of these other roles and see what you run into. And, mm-hmm. you know, are there things that maybe can move out of the way? Yeah, it can be really evocative. Yeah. And you've already sort of spoken, or at least, or at least I guess I'm, understanding the importance of like knowing our type and knowing our partner's type is yeah seems pretty crucial right like what what makes sex satisfying to me what makes it satisfying to you how how do we put that together into a sex life we both want Absolutely. And that's why I think that this can be a fun model for couples to talk about, because I think having that conversation of, you know, what do you want in the bedroom? What do you want in the bedroom? You know, that that can bring up a lot of self-consciousness for a lot of couples. A lot of the couples I work with, you know, they just have never had a conversation about sex because they feel really uh, ashamed and embarrassed. And it's just, we don't have a ton of tools to teach us how to talk about sex. So this can be something that, again, it it feels light and playful. um, And so it can be an easier way to open the door to a conversation conversation of, hey, I found this, you know, funny personality type thing online. Which one do you think you are? But then it can, yeah, really open up a conversation that can end up being very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So would you say again, where people can find the quiz? I, um, it may very well be out by the time this airs. So listeners might be able to jump right (laughs) over there right now and do it, but if not soon. Yes. So they can find it on my website at vmtherapy.com. And I will send you a direct link to the quiz as well once we have that. So uh, you can send that out to people. But yeah, I would love to connect with any of your listeners on my website. Um, We do a weekly free newsletter every Friday where we talk about different free tips and techniques and tricks for having exceptional sex lives and relationships. So I'd be happy to connect with anyone. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. You've been listening to Better Sex. Please visit our website, bettersexpodcast.com, for show notes and additional episodes. And that's a wrap for today. I really hope you enjoyed the episode. If you are enjoying the podcast, if some of this material resonates with you and you would like to make a difference and make sure that this keeps coming out in the world once a week, ongoing, There are a couple things you could do to show your appreciation. The first would be to go to iTunes and rate and review the show. That really helps us be found by new listeners when you review the show on iTunes. You can find a link at bettersexpodcast.com slash iTunes. The other thing I want to invite you to consider is becoming a Patreon. For a small monthly pledge, you get some benefits. So for $2 a month, you get advanced access to every single episode. For $5 a month, you get a chapter of my upcoming new book. And for $10 a month, I host quarterly get to know you and question and answer chats over the web. And you get invited to that. I would love to have your membership in that become part of the Better Sex family. 
You can find a link at bettersexpodcast.com slash Patreon, which is P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Again, thanks for listening. I'm glad you're here. Feel free to comment, ask questions, get in touch. I'd love to hear from listeners. Thanks. Thanks.